Hey there scientists, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Mrs. Newby and I teach at Flynn Park Elementary School, which is in the school district of University City. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching science for third grade, but as always, everyone is welcome to learn with us and I'm so happy you are here with me today. So today, we were inside because I was exploring um, a kit that I recently got of different fossils. And these fossils, I realized, were all from our regional area, so around, you know, this St. Louis area. And I started to wonder and notice something. So a lot of those science skills that we've been doing within these videos um, of noticing and wondering some things really kind of started flowing in my head as I was exploring with this kit here. And I know in the past I've gone to different creeks um, around the area and just different, just different places and I've noticed different types of fossils. And I know fossils are imprints of a particular animal or organism that was dead. So, and it just kind of like stuck there for a long time and as time went by, it just kind of like imprinted in or on a rock, which is kind of cool. So, I was taking a look at these fossils and these are all St. Louis or you know Missouri fossils that were found found in these in this area, and I wanted to do some research about them, and um, kind of explore the different types of organisms or fossils that used to be or maybe still are in our area. So the first one that I saw, which was really cool, is this shark tooth. I'm sure you guys see lots and lots of shark teeth. It's kind of little, isn't it? It's pretty small. I've seen some people have like shark teeth necklaces um, or things that look like the shape of a shark tooth because it's kind of a cool shape, right? So I found this one um, and I also was able to um, go and find some pictures of these types of um, organisms that were found and have fossils now. So here's a shark or even just like a ray. So that's the first fossil that I found. Okay. The second one that I found on here is called the brachiopod, and it looks like this. What do you guys notice this looks like? The first thing I thought whenever I saw this was, oh, it's like a seashell. It looks like a seashell. And when I looked up a picture for it, it is a shelled animal. That's kind of the description that was given. So it's kind of like a shelled animal. Look how different these look. It's kind of cool, right? And I know seashells or any type of shelled animals also require lots of water too. So of course, so do sharks. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, the next one is algae. So on this rock, you'll see, or on this fossil here, you'll see if you kind of take a little closer look at it. There's like different you know, patterns and different things on this rock or fossil. And this is considered algae. So it's like, there's different, it looks like crystals at one corner. Um, and there's like different colors and just different like layers. It's pretty cool. And I found a rock here. It's like a tiny green plant that lives in clumps. So you probably seen algae that looks like this. The next one I saw looked very similar to the brachiopod, and it is called a bivalve. So again, it kind of looks like a shell. It's pretty cool looking. There's like some little bumps on it too. And again, it's kind of shaped like a seashell, right? And when I looked this one up, I recognized them right away. I recognized what they look like when they're alive. Haven't you guys seen these? They're clams. I've seen these and I still see them, right? So I already know that these for sure are still alive. They're still in existence. Um, the next one was a gastropod. That's pretty cool. Now this one, when I was like looking super close at it, there are so many things on this thing. First, look at this like swirly thing. That's kind of cool. There's all kinds of like things embedded in this, in this rock or fossil. It's pretty cool looking. There's a bunch, oh, there's one here on this side also. Do you see that? It's pretty cool. 
So I looked this one up too. I've never heard of ga gastropods before, so I wanted to look it up to see what it looks like. And it's this little cute snail or slug. Now my printer was not perfect in color, but you can kind of see that it's a little snail. Isn't that cute? It's a snail or slug. I've seen these around still. Um, another cool one that I didn't think could be possible to make a fossil out of was wood. It's called petrified wood. So after a long time, if there's like a tree stump or just like an old piece of wood, it can turn into a fossil. I thought that was pretty cool. I, and I noticed that. So this is the, the petrified wood. And you know how like whenever you cut down a tree, you can kind of see the rings to notice like how old it might be. Well, this one I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking that there might be those also on this on this fossil, but um, I thought this was pretty cool that this used to be wood at one point and now it's a just a rock. It looks like a rock. I can kind of see those lines and those layers. And I looked up what it could be even before this, what it would look like, and it literally looks like a tree stump that just turned into a rock. Isn't that cool? Now my thinking is that. Obviously we still have trees around in Missouri, but this type of um, tree, this like type of the species of the tree most likely is extinct. Um, but yeah, it's from a tree, it's pretty cool. The next one was a cephalopod. These are some fancy science words. This one looks really cool. It looks like a cylinder, but then the, it looks like there's like a, it kind of like, swoops down on on this side here but notice this thing here now again this used to be a living organism this used to be alive at one point it's just round and it caves in over there and when i look this one up you guys ready to see what this thing looked like it's an octopus or a squid that's kind of cool I've never seen these in Missouri though. So again, it kind of got me wondering because then I went back and I looked at some of the other ones like a shark. Have I, have you seen a shark in Missouri? Or a shelled animal? I don't think I really see very many shelled animals besides maybe those clams. Algae I see, like in lakes, I think we still have uh, lakes and, and creeks and stuff that, you know, you can see algae in. Even if you have like a fish tank, you can kind of start to see algae. Um, but the clams I notice, uh, snails, I'm not really sure. I feel like I see them more around like watery areas. Petrified wood or wood tree stumps. But that octopus and squid like really got me. I'm like, am I sure that these seashells are these fossils are from the Missouri area. So I thought that was really interesting. And once I got to that point, I just started asking myself like, why, like why? Why Why was an octopus in Missouri at one point? Huh? I'm gonna write down some things that I've noticed and wonder so far. And I think there's still more fossils that I wanna kinda go through, but let's kinda take a look, kinda like take a step back and start wondering and asking some questions. So I noticed that a lot of these animals are these organisms are fossils so far at one point used to live in water. So organisms, I'm going to say need water to survive. So in the organisms I'm talking about are the ones from these fossils. Um, I also want to ask a wondering question, and my question is, why were these organisms in Missouri? That's kind of strange to me. We, we don't have very much water. I mean, we have creeks, um, and maybe, you know, the, the rivers that we have, and some, um, you know, just some little ponds and stuff, but a shark can't be found in those. They don't live, they need, they need actually, like, salt water. So why were they in Missouri at one point? Why were these organisms in, I'm going to put M-O, short for Missouri. Why were these organisms in Missouri? 
Let's keep, oh, you know what? Something else I noticed. Some of them are extinct, like, let's see so far. Some of them are kind of not necessarily extinct fully, but they're extinct in Missouri. So like, for example, my shark, my shark friend here, he's extinct in Missouri. His relatives and the other organisms that are kind of related to him are in other parts of the world. They're in seas, all in all parts of the word, world. So are these octopus and um, octopi and squid. They are also in existence. They still exist. Their relatives still exist. We see them today, but we don't see them in Missouri. So we'd consider them extinct in Missouri. So I want to write that down. Some are ex extinct in Missouri. Okay, and I said some because I know, for example, like the um, the clams and the algae, they're still in Missouri, so they're not considered extinct within this area. So let's go ahead and move on. The last one we did was the octopus or squid. The next one we have is coral. Um, and I think if you've been like to an ocean or to a beach or something, and like at the bottom of those of those oceans, um, you'll notice some really cool coral. So this is the fossil. This is what it looks like when it turns into a fossil. It's kind of cool. It looks like a, like an ice cream cone, doesn't it? Just plop some ice cream on top of there and enjoy it. It's kind of funny. But if you look closer too, you'll notice like some some lines. And again, my printer is not perfect, but a picture of coral, kind of like that. It kind of like, it looks like it's like kind of flying or, you know, being blown by the wind, but the water currents usually kind of let it, allow it to kind of dance in the, in the ocean. So it's kind of cool. Um, and again, these aren't in Missouri anymore, but why were they, why were these fossils found in Missouri? If the fossils were found in Missouri, that means that at one point they used to be here. So um, we still have coral. We still see them in oceans, but not so much in Missouri. So again, they are extinct in Missouri. Um, another one is an ammonite. This one is really cool looking. It's pretty smooth. And it's really little, um, but yeah, and it's really dark too. Look at that. It's pretty dark. It looks like there's like a, like a, uh, I don't know, something on the back of it right here. And again, over time, it was probably on, you know, on something for a really long time. Um, before it became a fossil, it was a, it's kind of related to an octopus or a squid. You want to see what it looked like? It's pretty cool looking. That's what the ammonites look like. And these for sure are not found anywhere. So not only in Missouri, but all over the world, they're just not, they're just not, um, in existence. So we consider these extinct. So that was an example of one that is extinct whenever I looked it up. And the last one is a crinoid. These were pretty cool looking. This one had a lot of texture to it. So here's the biggest piece I had in this kit from a crinoid. Um, and again, there's all these bumpy layers and it's just like a straight, it looks like it's, it looks like it was probably like an animal that was probably long. Um, but yeah, there's like these textured lines here, super bumpy, super cool. Um, and when I look this up, this one is considered the Missouri fossil because there's lots of these around. And if you go into creeks today, you'll probably be able to find some uh, crinoid fossils. And this is what they look like. Whoa, right? Imagine, <laughs> imagine going somewhere or being in some water. And again, this is found in water and seeing something that giant. Um, these are also uh, related to starfish. So again, starfish I know live in oceans. They don't live in lakes or rivers or creeks. Um, but again, so these are not found in Missouri anymore. The fossils are found in Missouri, but the live ones are not found in Missouri, but their relatives like starfish are found in oceans. Um, so again, it kind of got me curious. Why are these or were these organisms once in Missouri when they were alive?
okay? So this fossil kit was super, super cool. I definitely plan on maybe going and exploring in some creeks to see if I can find actual um, fossils that are just like still in nature. Now, these a lot of cool scientists were able to collect throughout and, you know, create a kit to kind of make it easier. But I know for a fact that if we go and explore in nature, we'll definitely be able to see some more fossils that are just laying around, which is kind of cool because if an organism dies and it just stays there over and over and over a long period of time, it's eventually going to embed in that stone or that rock and you'll be able to see an indention and kind of like the shape of what that organism looked like. So I have a cool article here. Usually I have a book, but I actually have this cool article that was written by Washington University Institute for School Partnership. Um, and they came up with some pretty cool facts and just research about ancient Missouri. So since we live in this area, it'd be interesting to know what this area looked like. Do you think that this area always looked like this? Imagine your neighborhood. Imagine where you living, you're living right now. What do you think it looked like a hundred years ago? Were there buildings in that area? What do you think it looked like 500 years ago? Or maybe a thousand? Or maybe millions and millions of years ago? Have you ever thought about that? It is mind blowing how crazy this area has changed over time. And it takes a long time for things like this to happen. But this article definitely helps us kind of know what happened at the beginning. What did Missouri look like way before we even existed? Um, and kind of like as it progressed, what did it start slowly changing into? Um, so the question is asking, what did Missouri look like a long, long, long time ago? And how did it change over time? So at the beginning, and it's kind of cool, it has a picture of the, uh, the crinoid on there. At the beginning, it was an ocean. Whoa, that makes total sense. That already answers our question. All of these fossils were found in Missouri because Missouri used to be an ocean. This whole entire area used to be filled with water. Can you imagine that? This, the land that we step on now was once covered in water and it used to be an ocean. So that explains exactly why all of these, these water organisms were found. All the fossils were found in here. Let's read to see what they found. It says, what we now know as Missouri used to be covered by a warm, shallow ocean millions and millions of years ago. During this time, Missouri was home to marine life like crinoids, corals, and starfish. That makes total sense. It's kind of crazy to imagine that there used to be a ton of water in this area. All of the state, the whole state of Missouri used to be covered in water. Now it says that it was a shallow ocean, so it wasn't very deep. Maybe it wasn't as deep as the oceans that we see now, but it was still considered an ocean. And that's why a lot of these organisms were found. Their um, fossils were found here in Missouri. And then after, over time, it started to change even more. Um, and the next section is dinosaurs in Missouri. So there used to be dinosaurs here. As time went on, the continents began to move. This raised our land out of the water it used to be under. So the land actually was raised or lifted up. So it kind of got us out of that water, which it was shallow to begin with. So it probably didn't take much lifting, but as like the continents were kind of moving and shifting, it allowed the land in Missouri to also rise up. Dinosaurs used to roam the land of Missouri millions of years ago, which still was very close to a large sea at that time. So our land was kind of raised up, but the since it was raised up a little bit, there was still kind of like a sea nearby. So although our Missouri land wasn't in water anymore, we were still really close to water because there were some parts of the area that didn't kind of didn't get raised up as much. Missouri's official state dinosaur, the Hypsabima, um, which is a duck-billed dinosaur found here during a fossil dig. So we actually have a state dinosaur, which is really cool. Look at what it looked like. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. 
And I think I um, have another picture here of a dinosaur, and this is most likely what it also looked like. Can you imagine one of these roaming around in Missouri? Crazy, right? Imagine that area that this dinosaur is, is walking on. That's where your house is built now. That's kind of funny to think about, right? So silly. Um, and then paleontologists have even found T-Rex relatives in Missouri. So not exactly T-Rexes, but relatives of T-Rexes. So animal or dinosaurs that are very similar to T-Rexes were also found in Missouri. So dinosaurs roamed Missouri before, or I'm sorry, after it was an ocean. Before we existed, dinosaurs took over this land. Kind of cool. Um, and again, obviously we know that dinosaurs are extinct, but there's still certain animals today that are relatives. So such as birds, there's lots of birds that are related to dinosaurs, um, that still exist today, but dinosaurs themselves do not exist. So after the dinosaur is extinct, then we get into the ice age times in Missouri. After the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, Missouri went through some ice ages. Animals like mastodons, which are related to today's elephants, lived in Missouri. The changes to the land during that time created our rivers. So during the ice age, after the, all of that ice melted, that's what allowed us to get the rivers that we have, such as the Missouri and the Mississippi River. By 12,000 years ago, the earliest humans to exist came to Missouri because of these rivers. So a lot of people noticed the rivers nearby this land in Missouri, and they said, I want to settle here because water is a big, important resource for humans to be able to get the things that we need. So they settled here. We have found their arrowheads at Mastodon's State Park, and these humans probably killed Mastodons for food. So here's a cool, kind of like a silhouette of a Mastodon. It looks like a giant elephant, but it had fur to kind of keep it warm because, of course, it lived in the Ice Age. Really cool looking. I would love to see one of those in real life. So now we're gonna get into Missouri today. So Missouri today, um, the Missouri we know today has different types of ecosystems than it had in ancient past. Today, Missouri has prairies, forests, and ponds with the types of animals you have been studying. A hundred or more years ago, there weren't as many city areas or neighborhoods. So think about that. A hundred or more years ago, there weren't all these buildings and neighborhoods and houses. So even, you know, a hundred years ago compared to millions of years ago, the timing of things still change. It changes over time. There were a lot more wild prairies, forests, and wetlands. Just imagine what your neighborhood looked like before people created the city or town. Imagine what it looked like 200 years ago. Imagine what it looked like thousands of years ago. Imagine what it looked like millions of years ago. And I know I asked you those questions before, but still, it is totally mind-blowing to think about what our area looked like before we existed, and again, millions of years ago. There could be fossil clues in your own backyard. So I think that's a really, really good point. Anytime you're exploring outside and you notice an indention of something, uh, some type of fossil, even if it looks like a seashell fossil, like that's still a cool fossil, and that seashell was alive so long ago. It takes so much time for a fossil to be created. So it's really cool that you can literally explore anywhere in your backyard because again, dinosaurs used to roam around that area. So you could find so many cool things in your backyard in different parks uh, near different creeks, really cool. So many of the types of living things from ancient Missouri are now extinct, so they did die. Um, however, some still exist today and some relatives of these plants and animals still exist today. Uh, but they just live in different parts. They don't live in Missouri anymore because we're not an ocean. For example, Missouri crinoids are now extinct, but their relatives are still alive in other parts of the world that are still covered in water because they need water to survive. Dinosaurs are now extinct. Mastodons are now extinct. But you can still find snails and freshwater clams and mussels whose ancestors lived long ago in parts of Missouri that still have water. Humans have changed Missouri's ecosystems in 
the in the recent past as well. So humans can also affect the area that we live in. Not only the land shifting and the continents kind of moving and raising the land, but humans, us as humans also change. So whenever we build um, neighborhoods and environments, we kind of change the living organisms that are gonna be in that area where there probably was homes for squirrels um, and you know birds and things like that. Maybe there's not as many or Maybe we try to work really hard to um, protect the prairies and the forests and the ponds. And then you'll notice more and more of these organisms coming to that area to make their home there. So humans affect, affect an ecosystem, but time also affects ecosystems. It, it happens over a huge, long, long period of time, which is really cool to know. So... The cool thing that we learned today is that Missouri used to be an ocean and millions and millions and millions of years ago, after it was an ocean and after the land shifted, dinosaurs took over. So that's kind of cool. And even after dinosaurs, we had mastodons. Missouri is a cool, interesting, super awesome place. And just knowing the history of it like that is really, really awesome to know. So I really want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to go out sometime. I know the weather is getting nice and warm. You can go out, go to a creek, go hiking, do something, but try to look and keep your eyes open to things that you notice and wonder about the area that you live in, because you will be surprised about how amazing our land is. I hope you had fun with this lesson and learning some amazing things about your home, your homeland, and I will see you next week. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.